What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. I think my three game win streak might get snapped tonight because of Severino. All of our high five batters went fucking crazy. Only one of our high five batters, um, which is Castro, scored under 10. The rest of them blew out 10. They did very, very, very solid. My pitcher, Severino, single-handedly fucked all of my lineups because I put him in every one of them. Um, I have one hope. I have a lineup at 77 with Kershaw, and it's a low-scoring night. So if Kershaw can get me to a little over 100, I still might cash. I will let everybody know on Twitter if I do. Hopefully I do, man, because I don't want this three-game win streak snapped. I really don't. I really wanted to keep it going. But it's possible that Severino screwed me. But hopefully everybody did great with the high-five batters. The batters went absolutely nuts. Everybody who played the batters, you probably are doing great as long as you avoided Severino. I know that like 56% in the tournaments that I played, 56% of those tournaments played Severino which is why the scoring is as low as it is. So hopefully I can squeak in if Kershaw really picks it up. He's already allowed two runs to San Francisco. Let's hope he picks it up and th strikes out like 13 by the end of it. Let's, re let's just pray, all right? <laughs> Everybody like the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's get straight into my NBA lineup for you guys for tonight, all right? Now, at the point guard position, I got John Wall. John Wall has been the most one of the most consistent players in the playoffs since they started. Wall just steps it up to a whole nother level once he hits playoffs. Um, he's going against Boston. He's matched up with Isaiah Thomas. That is fantastic. He has 60-point potential here, obviously, like he does every game, especially in playoffs. At 10-3, I feel like I got to have John Wall in there for that upside potential. I love John Wall. At the shooting guard position, Avery. Bradley. He did very, very well. He got, I uh, believe, over 35 fantasy points matched up with, yeah, he got 39 against them last game. It's a great matchup for Avery Bradley, so I am locking him in at 6,400. I love Avery Bradley here. All right, sticking with that game on my next two spots as well, Otto Porter at the small forward position. Otto Porter had a great, great game. This matchup between Washington and Boston is very good for both forwards of both teams. Okay, Crowder and Porter are fantastic options here. Um, I don't see why not just putting them both in the same lineup, to be real with you. They both scored over 30 uh, last game. They're both going to score over 30 this game. I love this series between Washington and Boston. It's my favorite series that's going right now. I don't really care much about Golden State, Utah. I honestly feel like Golden State's probably going to sweep Utah, especially with Gobey going through what he's going through. And now Favors is banged up too, so... Which is why it brings me to Boris Diaw. That is my value play. He's only 2,900. He played 17 minutes last game. If Favors does, in fact, miss the game, or if even Favors plays, Gobey is still going to be limited. Favors is possibly going to be limited with this back issue. Favors did not practice um, on Monday night. Okay, last night, he, yesterday, he did not practice. So there is a chance he misses. If he misses, Boris Diaw is the best value play on the board. Pretty much, I'm playing Boris Diaw regardless because Gobey is not the full workload. He's not even close to full workload, as you saw last game. Um, Favors is coming off back soreness. Who knows how much he'll play. Boris Diaw is locked for 15 to 20 minutes, and he can get 20-plus easily in this matchup against Golden State where all they have is Zaza Pachulia to stop him. I love Boris Diaw down below. I know that... I know that our boy Draymond Green is an amazing defender, but Boris Diaw is not going to have to bother with him, okay? Boris Diaw is not going to have to deal with him like that. He's going to be going matched up predominantly with Zaza Pachulia, maybe McGee off the bench. But I love Boris Diaw here in this game. I absolutely love him at only 2,900. He is my value guy, and he is at my center position. At the next guard position, George Hill. George Hill has played very well against Golden State. As you see previously on in the... Uh, season on April 10th he went against Golden State at Golden State only played 19 minutes and dropped 35.3 imagine if he plays 30 minutes 
That's four. That he's gonna get forty-five plus here, and at only fifty-six hundred, he is my best value play of the day. Um, I am locking George Hill in all of my lineups. It's a fantastic matchup for him against Stephen Curry. I love it. I love it. I love it. He is locked in. Kevin Durant. It looks like Kevin Durant's gonna get his full workload back here, back at home in Golden State. With Go with Kevin Durant getting his full workload back, being matched up against Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward is just nowhere near the talent to be able to hang with KD. KD is going to destroy him. I can see KD getting 50-plus here in this matchup against Gordon Hayward. KD's just too tall, too lanky. He's just way too good for Gordon Hayward to have any chance of holding him at all. So I love KD getting his full workload back here in Golden State. Run him up. My final position, I got a little value guy. We all know Bogdanovich can come out of nowhere and put 30-plus up at any time. Bogdanovich going against Boston. Like I said, forwards are a good play against on both sides of the ball here. All right, Bogdanovich comes off the bench. He's going to be dealing with backups of Boston. He's probably going to be dealing with Jalen Brown, Gerald Green, guys like that. Both guys don't really bother me on the defensive end. Bogdanovich is an amazing shooter. Let's hope he gets his stroke going, and if he does... That's going to be a fantastic play. And there it is, guys. John Wall, Avery Bradley, Otto Porter, Jay Crowder, Boris Diaw, George Hill, Kevin Durant, and Bogdanovic is my NBA lineup for the day. Check back with me on Twitter at Cam underscore ATL to check and see if anything has changed. And if anything changes, I will also comment it down in the comments section. Um, let's get straight into MLB, guys. Let's do it. All right, guys, we have a huge 15-game slate. Real quick, um, in yesterday's video, I mentioned you guys go check out the blog on the website, greenlightdfs.com. I, I did the blog in the mornings. It was a long-ass blog. I had a bunch of awesome information in there that I was super excited to get to you guys and, so you guys could read and give you guys an advantage in the slates and help out. Um, I wrote So I wrote the whole blog. I published it. Everything was good. It said it was there. I went back to the website like 10 minutes later, and it was gone. Nothing was there. Nothing put was posted up, and then it was completely just gone. And it took me like an hour and a half to write this blog up the way I wanted it. And it was just, once I saw it was gone, it just killed my morale. I just gave in. I was like, you know what? I'm not taking an hour and a half to write the same exact thing over again. So it frustrated me. I found out what I did wrong, though. So starting this morning... Um, I will be having come the morning time because I'm recording this Monday night right now. So Tuesday around 11 o'clock in the morning, you can go check out on greenlightdfs.com. I will have the blog touching on things that I don't exactly touch on in the video, giving you guys an extra edge in the games. All right. So make sure you check out greenlightdfs.com, our official website. Hit up the 24-7 live DFS chat for any questions you have at any time of the day. Um, and yeah, so let's get straight into MLB. Let's get it. At my first pitcher spot, guys, we have Sale playing. He's at 12-5. Sale is an awesome option. Boston is a very hitter-friendly park, though, so it bothers me a little bit. And Baltimore has some good power hitters. I'm not too worried. I think Sale is going to have an amazing game, so I definitely encourage you to at least put him in one lineup. Okay? But... I am going kind of two mid ranges guys. Not mid-range, upper mid-tier pitchers here. Because after getting fucked by Severino here, I really want to be safe. Okay, I really want to be safe and solid. Once again, I have an, um, some amazing batters for the high five. So if both of our pitchers can hit, we are winning huge. Okay, once again, my batters are fire. All right, if these pitchers that I mentioned right now hit we are set to win a good amount of money guys so i'm hyped up let's get straight into it first pitcher i absolutely love is james paxton going against the angels at home in seattle paxton has been amazing this year against detroit he dropped 34 against texas he dropped 38 against houston he dropped 32 and again against houston he dropped 21 he had a down game against oakland but that's all right i'm not too worried about that Against the Angels, the only person that has hit him well is Cole Calhoun, okay? Throughout the history, the only person who has even hit him decent is Cole Calhoun. I will take that 
and I will run with that, okay? Mike Trout's really the only guy in the lineup that, that I fear, okay? He's the only guy that I fear. Paxton has done very well and held him in check throughout his career. Paxton has been on fire. He's definitely got that safe feel to me. I, I definitely see 25 plus here out of him, 25 at minimum out of him. I definitely see 25 to 30 plus out of Paxton here at home in Seattle. He's only sporting a 1.39 ERA. He has absolutely been playing amazing. His strikeout rate really puts his upside up there. I love James Paxton at only 9,200, especially if you're deciding that you want to kind of fade off sale. All right? So James Paxton, love him. Second pitcher option that I absolutely love, another upper tier guy, Irvin Santana. I absolutely love Santana here at home in Minnesota going against Oakland. Santana has a ridiculous 0.77 ERA. He is undefeated 4-0. He also gets very good strikeouts. He's got the good strikeout upside. He can definitely get you 10 strikeouts out of nowhere. Okay, Oakland is just a decent hitting team here, guys. They're bottom in the league at average runs and OPS. They're good at the home runs, which is what's been salvaging their offense, okay? Going against Santana, Santana is very good at making people hit ground balls. Santana is a very good pitcher here. I definitely think Minnesota gets the win here at home. I love Santana, guys, and if you look, he has played amazing at home. He dropped 44 against the White Sox. That type of upside is what you have with Santana. Going against Oakland, uh, an offense that has been struggling so far this year. If he can keep the ball inside of the park, he's going to have an absolutely amazing day here. And only 86 with that type of upside, I am locking him in. All right? Now, here we go, guys. I said I got some fire, and I got some fire. Starting off at the first base position, I almost put this guy in the high five yesterday which would have been great because i believe he he got a home run and so i think he's got like 17 as of right now the games aren't over but uh matt carpenter matt carpenter acts uh, absolutely has dominated peralta the pitcher he is facing guys listen to this when i say i got the fire i mean i have the fire all right Matt Carpenter has gone 20 of 43. This is no small sample size. And like I told you guys, when a guy has been up to bat this many times against a pitcher and done as well as Carpenter has done, you lock him in and you sleep soundly. All right? Matt Carpenter, 20 of 43 for three home runs in a 465 average. That is ridiculous. Out of 43 at bats, which is a very good sample size for us to go by, he has got a 465 average. That is ridiculous. That is amazing. And he has got to be in the high five. Going down at the outfield, another guy that has absolutely dominated the pitcher he's going against, Yasmani Tomas. I love Yasmani here. He's got so much power. I absolutely love him going against Tanner Rourke. He has gone two of six, but both of those hits were home runs for a 333 average. Okay, both of his two hits out of his six at bats against Rourke were home runs. He's got major power. I definitely think with them going against Washington, Washington's going to be putting up a lot of runs. Okay, all of the batters for Arizona are going to be swinging for the fences to try to keep up here. I love Yasmani to come out with some real power here and have a very good game, um, at least hitting a home run here in this matchup. I love, love, love him. Next up, we got my boy. If I can find him. I guess I fucking forgot his fucking position right now. <laughs> there we go. There he is. My boy Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier has done great against Duffy. Todd Frazier also has been hitting the ball very, very well as of late. Out of the 16 at-bats against Duffy, he has five hits two of which were home runs and a 313 average. Todd Frazier is definitely going to hit one out of the park here. I absolutely love Todd Frazier going against Duffy, especially with the way Frazier has been batting as of late. Um, he's really been hitting home runs and getting good points. Look, as of April 23rd, he has almost gotten 10 plus in every matchup other than against Kansas City and against Detroit. Other than that, he has 11 against Kansas City, 24 against Kansas City. He has dominated Kansas City 
He does very, very solid against them. He is going to have an amazing game here against Duffy. Two home runs out of the five hits he has against Duffy. I absolutely love Todd Frazier here. And that's what you need, guys. You need some solid pitchers that have some good upside that are safe for you. All right? And then you need batters who can knock the ball out of the park because a lot of times if you get a bunch of guys who don't hit home runs, you're just not going to place. You need guys who can hit the ball out of the park, and that's exactly what you got here in the high five. So there you go, guys. We got Paxton, Santana, Carpenter, Frazier, and Tomas. Once again, the high five will be lit, especially our batters. Once again, I am loving them. Our pitchers are definitely more safe than I went with uh, yesterday. I, I'm so mad Severino blew it, man. Obviously, a lot of people were feeling Severino as well, playing in 56% in the tournaments that I was in. So it's ridiculous, which made the scoring of the night very low. So I might still salvage a win. Hopefully, I really hope so, man. We'll see. We'll see. Like the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now, we're about to do the batter's box, guys. Get ready for the batter's box. Box. I am going to list off names. Every single one of these names that I mentioned have done amazing against the pitchers they are facing, guys. So here we go. Starting off with Xander Bogarts, um, Charlie Blackman, Jacoby Ellsbury, Brett Gardner, Matt Holliday, um, Aldemis Diaz, I know I'm fucking that up. Jed Giorco has also, also done good. Tommy Pham has gone 2 of 4 for 2 home runs and a 500 average against Peralta. He has destroyed him as well. Um, Adam Duvall, Suarez, Vado, um, Beltre. We got Mazzara, uh, Nomar Mazzara, Rufned Odor, Jay Bruce, Lucas Duda, Wilmer Flores, Will Myers. We got Corey Dickerson, Kevin Kiermeyer, Logan Morrison, Brad Miller, Steven Souza. Uh, Tampa Bay has hit very well against Vol Volquez, guys. So definitely keep that in mind, setting your lineups. Um, Brian Dozier, Joe Maurer. Um, who else we got here, guys? Miguel Montero. Uh, we got Daniel Murphy, Matt Waiters. And we've got, let's see who else we got, guys. We got more guys for you. All right, Brandon Crawford, Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, Chris Owings. I definitely love stacking up Owings and Tomas in the same lineup. Both of those guys have done very well against Rourke. Nelson Cruz, 7 of 23 for two home runs and a 304 against Shoemaker. Jared Dyson is my favorite value play of the day. He is 3 of 6 for a 500 average against Shoemaker, and he is very cheap. I love Jared Dyson. All right, Matt Joyce. 6 of 20 for two home runs. Steven Vogt. Jose Abreu has done great. 12 of 34 for a home run and 353 average. Tim Anderson seems like he crushes everybody. I love Tim Anderson. Giovanni Soto, 2 of 6, and those two hits were home runs. Um, we got Travis Shaw. I know it's a lot, guys. Stick with me. It's a big slate. I got to give you guys all the juice. Eric Thames. Jonathan Villar. Shaw. Thames and Villar are a great stack against Carlos Martinez. They have had their way with him. Jose Altuve, Josh Reddick, Evan Gaddis, Paulo Orlando, Salvador Perez has gone 19 of 60. This is a huge sample size. 19 of 60 for two home runs and a 317. Remember what I said, huge sample size and still able to hit over a 300 batting average is awesome. 317 average out of 60 at bats. I love Salvador Perez here. Cole Calhoun, like I said, is the sole guy who has hit Paxton well, and he has barely cleared 300. He's 7 of 23 for a 304 average. Lock in James Paxton. Um, Darwin Barney, Devin Travis, Jose Ramirez, Francisco Lindor, Lonnie Chisenhall. If he gets the start, he has gone 13 of 40 for two home runs and a 325. Carlos Santana. He has absolutely a shit ton of home runs against Verlander. He has, in 69 at-bats, he has hit eight home runs. He's only batting a 217 average. Verlander has struck him out a lot, but he does have a lot of power here against Verlander, and he has proven that he can hit home runs. So if you want a, a little flyer for a chance to 
like get a home run here against Verlander, I would say Carlos Santana. All right? And that's it, guys. I hope everybody kills it, man. Once again, check, out, check in the morning at greenlightdfs.com for the blog with all the extra information. I appreciate everybody for watching. As usual, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at Cam underscore ATL. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I am out.